Fiat recently revealed the new 600E, their electric kind of, would you say, crossover hatchback? I'm not sure what you call it exactly, but um, I quite like the look of it. And I thought, it's a car you might be able to buy soon. So let's have a look at it and see what we think. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name's Sam Evans, the Electric Viking. Fiat, they are technically an Italian car company, but they have a little bit of a relationship now with, well, America and the rest of Europe and, well, all over the place because they're part of the Stellantis Automotive Group. And Fiat are the main car brand propping up electric car sales for Stellantis. Their most popular EV is by far the 500e. I saw a review of the 500e, which is their mini electric hatchback. I love the look of it. Specs are not that great, but I love the look of them. And I can see why people would really like them as well. Because a lot of people buy cars on style. Have a stylish car, which is also EV. Perfect combination. But the reviews are not the greatest. For example, Car and Driver gave the Fiat 500e 4 out of 10. That's, um, that's a bit painful. I've never seen them give a car a review that bad. But I like it. Mm. Either way, though, it's way too small for me. It's way too small for most people. The 600E is basically like a very similar car, but nearly twice the size, literally. That said, it's still not that big. It's a small crossover, and that gives you an idea of just how small the 500E really is, and sort of a direct successor to the 500X. That said, the 500X will continue to live on until people stop buying it, which could be soon, because this is much better. Now, when I first saw the images of this car from looking at, at a distance, I thought, ah, oh, yeah, that's okay. When I saw some better pictures, I think the styling really works. There's not many SUVs with rounded headlights where you think that looks good or crossovers or any car, to be honest. But I think this really works. Let me know what you think of the styling. Now, we do know one thing. It'll share components from a number of other Stellantis Group EVs. Those include the Jeep Avenger. The Jeep Avenger is selling quite well in Europe. People really like it. You can see why too, it's actually pretty good. Front wheel drive, but apparently it actually drives pretty well off road, which is surprising. It'll share components with the Avenger, also with the Opel Mocha, the Peugeot 2008, and the DS Automobile DS3. That means it'll use the ECMP electric architecture that underpins those cars. And although the badge doesn't technically say 600E, it says 600, well, since it's an E version, I'm guessing they'll add an E when it actually begins production. So as you can see, it's got a five door body style, also a longer body, longer wheelbase than the 500E and a lot more ground clearance. So seeing as the company hasn't revealed the specifications exactly for it yet, we can look at the Avenger, which it appears as though they will basically use a lot of the parts in the Avenger, which would make sense. Same E, G, and P platform, same motors and, and probably battery packs as well. The Avenger then has 154 horsepower and 260 newton meters of torque, which is 192 pound feet, and it has a 54 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now, one thing worth keeping in mind is some critics are saying that the Jeep Avenger small electric SUV is actually the best Jeep ever made. I'm not sure if that's true, but that's what some critics have said. And you've got to admit, it actually does look really good. They've done a fantastic job with the styling of the Avenger. I think they've also done a fantastic job with the styling of this too. And this appears to be a very similar size to the Avenger. It's 4.1 meters long. That's 161 inches, and it rides on 18-inch wheels. I'm guessing this will as well. At the core of this car, I would say, and the Avenger, is a 400-volt architecture. But the Jeep's charging isn't really all that fast, unfortunately. It's 100 kilowatt DC fast charging, a little bit below what you would hope of a new car, a new model. Hopefully, by the time this comes out, it has faster charging than the Jeep Avenger. Stellantis actually just revealed the exact details of the Avenger within the last week, and they say that it has a 400 kilometer range on the WLTP cycle and up to 550 kilometers in city driving. I haven't heard that quoted before from too many other manufacturers. i will just go with the 400 kilometers of range. Very likely this new car will also have 400 kilometers of range. One thing they also say in the media release for Stellantis, it'll add 30 kilometers of range to the battery pack in three minutes. It's kind of a strange statistic to say, but 
Anyhow, if you need 30 kilometers of range and you're in a DC fast charger, as long as it can charge at 100 kilowatt fast charging, you get 30 kilometers in three minutes. So that's about all we know so far about the Fiat 600e. But I do know that um, Jeep will be EV only in Europe by 2030, say Stellantis. I'm going to guess Fiat will be as well. But here's the big challenge, the pricing. Stellantis are saying they're struggling to make the price competitive. They say that it costs them twice as much money to build an EV versus an internal combustion engine vehicle. I can't imagine the price being all that affordable considering those comments from their CEO. Hopefully things change by the time this comes out next year in 2024. What do you think of it? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.